Professor Ronald Lee, thank you very much for joining us today and speaking to us. Um, tell me a little bit about your um, startup, Novo Heart. Tell me about the business. Oh, just to make a long story really short, so Novo Heart is a spin out company that we have founded to basically commercialize the R&D work that we've been doing in the past at least about 15 years or so. Okay, and what does it do? What, 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 what sort of um, business do you, are you in? <laughs> <laughs> sure, so Novo Heart is a stem cell biotech company, so it basically uh, focuses on stem cell. So as the starting material, and uh, especially uh, we're, sp we're specialized in heart regeneration. So basically uh, the technology that we have developed uh, is that if I'm to take only about 2.5 mil of blood from you today, and you come back to me, let's say in about eight to 16 weeks, I can show you uh, in front of you uh, several jars of mini heart at this stage that are genetically identical to your own self. Okay. And is this being implemented in healthcare now, or is it still in the research? So stage? the technology. Uh, so you have. To, I have to answer your question by stages. Mm -hmm. So it depends on which particular stage that you we are talking about. And obviously, so we have several. We have a roadmap and several milestone and, and stages. So for now, uh, the technology is mature enough. Uh, for applications okay. um, and we are working with pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. uh, to basically try to revolutionize the process of uh, drug discovery and development of new uh, therapeutics. So that's step uh, number one. Uh, at the patient level, we also want to offer a service for, let's say, uh, different patients, heart patients, cancer patients, to identify potential side effects, because mm -hmm. a lot of these uh, side effects have to do with cardiotoxicity, which is uh, a negative effects uh, of, of the heart. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately, the step three is that uh, we think that our mini hearts are also the prototype for future transplantation constructs. Mm. So we are now working with our US and international colleagues to try to uh, test that in the clinic as well. So did this startup come out of uh, the university here or is it your own business? How did it eventuate? This is just a classical kind of like uh, translation of academic findings into the real world or commercial world so to speak. So um, it's, it's basically my own research uh, but I was trained uh, and started my career in the US and as I said I've been back in Hong Kong for about five six years mm -hmm. so uh, it's really a the product of a, a, you know, a combination of projects that have uh, myself involved in the past 15 years or so. So it is an international program, so it involved multiple U.S. partners, collaborators as well. And um, originally it was, uh, the R&D was academic in nature, um, but we do the usual drills like uh, when the technology is right, when the finding is right, we go ahead and file IPs. So the IPs belong to the institutions, right. for, for instance, some of them. And uh, so for us to proceed to the stage of commercializing, we have to license these IPs from the different institutions, including Hong Kong U's as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it involves different technologies. So it's more like a classical, it's not like we are inventing anything uh, totally new, but it's just a process that is very common, let's say, in the U.S., and we're adopting this model, trying to do it in Hong Kong as well. So profit-wise, does everyone get a, a, a piece, you know, does everyone share in it? So you've got the research, you've got the university, you've got the, the IPs that you're talking about. Does right. everyone share in that profit? Um, in, in a sense, I think uh, uh, the other way of looking at this is this everybody kind of like contributes to it and it has to be this way because like in the modern uh, world mm. of medicine, it's about working, uh, collaborating together and um, you know, merge your expertise to create something new. Uh, but obviously Hong Kong U is playing a big part in it and with luck we've been fortunate to have secured uh, you know, pretty good funding from the government. And so that allows us to train enough people locally because this is not like uh, you can get anyone on the street and be able to do it. And you have to equip uh, even the people with the right yeah. skill, skill sets and expertise as well. So, uh, so that part uh, is an academic program. 
So my thinking has always been universities are great places, obviously, for training. But once they are equipped with the skills, once they graduate, once they get their degrees, uh, bachelor, master's, PhD, what's going to happen after? So uh, what we've been working with, let's say, uh, not only with the industry and venture capital, but also, uh, you know, let's say with the Science Park, is that we try to create um, or optimize this ecosystem in Hong Kong. So the universities, you get the education, you get the training, but then after you finish school, you go to the real world. The question is, are there enough jobs around, you know, to support the tech business, not just for biotech, but technology in general, you mm -hmm. know, green energy, IT, etc. And IT is not just about uh, cell phone apps and games, but also there are hardware, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a big area that I think many of us are thinking about, and I think this is also the spirit of having these conventions as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So why Hong Kong? You didn't stay in the US to continue there. Why, what brought you to Well, Hong the Kong? question is why not? Good. So uh, there are personal as well as objective reasons. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to, again, make a long story uh, short, I think Hong Kong has all the advantages. So it hasn't gone very far in science and technology yet. Uh, but it has all the infrastructures that it takes to become a success story. And for me, coming from the U.S., I think there are several very obvious uh, parameters that uh, any city needs to fulfill in order to do well in science and technology. Number one, you have to have the financial system, and I don't have to tell you anything more about Hong Kong being one of the major financial centers. Legal system, we have yes. a common law, yeah. we don't have that. Uh, the tech business is basically doomed because you have to have the IP protection yes. and all those. Um, and the medical, the education system, uh, we just talked about it. You have to have enough trainees and you have to have enough professors working with the industry to generate new ideas, new IPs. And when it comes to biotech, you need to have the medical systems as well. And we have one of the best in, in Asia and in the world. And the fifth reason is that all of the above, they have to be clustered together. So all of a sudden, Hong Kong being a small place, this is actually a big advantage. You look at Boston and Massachusetts, you look at San Diego and California, Bay Area, they all share the same uh, criteria. So I think uh, Hong Kong has a lot of, uh, basically all the ingredients that it takes to become successful. And these ingredients are in some ways very difficult for other places to reproduce. Not that they cannot, but they cannot easily reproduce within a short time. So obviously we are missing, I think Hong Kong in general miss, is missing a lot of uh, other things as well, but those are relatively easy to fix compared to you know the infrastructural supports that I've just mentioned. That is a huge encouragement for our students here at Hong Kong U, our graduates, and, and you know thinking about being entrepreneurs. So that is a huge encouragement for them to you know, focus on, on Hong Kong, and I think a lot of them would like to, to hear that. Now, you are obviously juggling a lot of different people and a mm -hmm. lot of different teams, mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is your advice to bring all of this together? Do you just work 24-7? How do you manage this? I'm just one piece. Okay. Uh, I see myself as an advocate, and I don't limit myself by a particular title or particular job description. And uh, for me, uh, like I say, I see myself an advocate and specifically an advocate for stem cell technology. So anything that has to do with it as far as I can afford the time. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about time management. Yeah. So uh, I absolutely need to sleep. I'm just another human. <laughs> and everybody needs to ask. I suggest people, you have to sleep because otherwise you make bad choices. Yeah. You make bad decisions. That's not what you want to do. Yes. And uh, perhaps what I can share personally uh, is that I exercise. I enjoy sports and I think it's important that you stay physically active and an hour you invest or spend in sports, it earns you at least three more hours to be able to do other things, yes. work, yeah. personal li life and you know, yeah. spend time with the kids and things like yes. that. Yes, mm. yeah. Okay, oh wonderful, wonderful advice. And so here at, at the University of Hong Kong, are you also teaching as well or a lab work as well with the students? I basically uh, do research, that's mm -hmm. at least my primary yeah. focus and I do some administration as well because uh, we founded uh, the stem cell group and now we have come to a very exciting stage uh, 
with all the groundwork that's been done with the students, other faculty members, government, uh, meaning Innovation Technology Commission and the Science Park and the university administration president's office has been extremely supportive and right. working closely with Professor Paul Tam and uh, Professor Peter Matheson has been very supportive as well. Yeah. So we are moving on to, to, to the next stage. Okay. So uh, with that, I, we all feel very excited about it. Uh, teaching, I do a little bit of teaching. Uh, but my other colleagues are not going to like it because I don't teach as much as my <laughs> other uh, colleagues do, uh, you know, for reasons because I have to be involved Research. in other yeah. aspects. Yeah. And other than that, uh, as I said already, I see myself as an advocate. I go uh, yeah. talk to students and the public. Uh, about you know what stem cells are and try to get them interested because I think out there is it's pretty dangerous because it can be the area can be confusing can be pretty confusing yeah. as well and um, you know one way is to define policy set regulations set you know um, guidelines but these are usually very lengthy processes okay. so you have to go to I mean there have been some legal uh, work groups you know uh, uh, but still in general these are very lengthy processes you have to go through the legislative council and things like that yeah. so uh, my w thinking is that the best way is to educate the public Right. So that if they know what makes sense, what doesn't, then they can use their own judgment and decide, do you want to really want to buy this service from this company, uh, which is not based on solid scientific ground? Right. So things like that. So uh, I, I think I would like to see myself as an advocate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and is it, is, is it uh, frustrating at times because you've got to go through these different government levels and things that, and I imagine sometimes that can be a slower process than, mm, than mm, mm. what you make. Which, I, how do I, you deal with that? Uh, things are always frustrating and I choose, I refuse to think about it this way. There are always issues no matter what you do. At some point there are always issues mm -hmm. and I think the issues are exactly where the opportunities are yeah. and we always have problems to fix and we don't just back out and stop because we hit a bump. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yes or no. So I think uh, we just have to decide whether we want to keep banging until somebody listens or until yeah. there is a right way. So, uh, you know, just have to find a consensus. I yeah. think we, that's why we have to talk and communicate. Yeah. Ronald Lee, thank you so much for joining. So many bits of advice there that our, our students It's my pleasure. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Mm.